أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما نافعا Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to the Reflections on the Risale-i Nur by Bedi Uzzaman Said Nursi podcast series. You can listen to this series wherever you listen to your podcasts or you can access the recordings of the series as well as other information on the website www.reflections.com hyphen rn dot org alhamdulillah up to this point we read through the first eight words in the book the words sözler by bedi uzzaman said nursi or as his students call him as we call him ustad nursi the first eight words are extremely important they appear to be simple they are not simple They are easy. They are made easy to understand very profound, sometimes complicated realities about faith, God, the place of humans in existence in the creation, our function and purpose, religion, the place of religion in our lives, in our overall existence, and many other questions. The first eight words are easy but comprehensive. One can begin from then and expand to probably, uh, probably this is not an exaggeration, extend from there to the entire religion. And when I say religion, I don't mean jurisprudence, practice, but the essence of the religion the reality that we are expected to, supposed to become familiar with by being exposed to religion, by being exposed to the message of the Qur'an and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. From here on, we will start delving into those profound issues in more detail. There will be a slight change in tone. Ustad Nursi actually published or compiled these first eight words into a separate, um, let's call it booklet, Küçük Sözler, or the smaller words, smaller in comparison to the bigger words that comprises 33 of those words, including the first eight. From here on, there, there will be a slight change in the tone. The parables will not be as at the forefront. Sometimes we will need to uh, you know, use our intellect and, and, and heart more in order to understand. Sometimes there will be the parables, but the parable itself will be a bit more complicated, detailed. So my advice to those who are exposed to the Risale Inur only by listening to these podcasts is that before continuing... First listen to the first eight words and then move on. Actually, first listen to the introduction on the website that I just mentioned, uh, www.reflections-rn.org. Read or listen to the introduction part of the website where we talk about what the Risale Inur is, who Bedi Uzzaman Said Nursi is, why we should read the Risale Inur and how we should read the Risale Inur. And then read the first eight words or listen to the um, podcast recordings about them. And then move on from the ninth word, inshallah. All right. Today we will begin the ninth word, inshallah. Bismillah. Dokuzuncu söz. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Fesubhanallahi hina tumsune ve hina tusbihun. Ve lehul hamdu fis semavati vel ardi ve aşiyyen ve hina tuzhirun. Ninth word, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, in the name of God, 
the merciful, the mercy giver. And here a verse, uh, actually two verses are uh, quoted. They are from the 30th chapter of the Quran, Surah al rum the chapter named Rum or Rome. And these are the 17th and 18th verses. فَسُبْحَانَ حَيْنَ تُمْسُونَ وَحَيْنَ تُصْبِحُونَ وَلَهُ الْحَمْدُ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَعَشِيًّا وَحَيْنَ تُظْهِرُونَ A translation of these verses may be as follows. So glorify God when you reach evening and when you rise in the morning, for all praise is His in the heavens and on earth, and towards the end of the day and when you have reached noon. These verses are the verses that provide the foundation for us to pray five times a day or the foundation for the five the times of the five obligatory prayers in the day and then we have other prayers that we you know spread around the day that are based on the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu and to some extent uh, indications of other verses in the quran too and the upcoming treatise the ninth word is an interpretation of these verses they are inspired by these verses Ey birader benden namazın şu muayyen 5 vakte hikmeti tahsisini soruyorsun pek çok hikmetlerinden yalnız birisine işaret ederiz O oh brother you are asking me concerning the wisdom in the specified times of the five daily prayers you are asking me about the wisdom in the specified times of the five daily prayers that is at sunrise shortly after when the sun is on top and then in the mid afternoon and then when sun sets and then when the the all light in the sky disappears and these are the morning prayer prayer the noon prayer the afternoon prayer the evening prayer and the night prayer or in turkish Sabah namazı, öğlen namazı, ikindi namazı, akşam namazı, and yatsı namazı. Or in Arabic, the Fajr prayer, or Salatul Fajr, Salatul Zuhr, Salatul Asr, Salatul Maghrib, and Salatul Isha. So, this is founded in religion. All Muslims, all believers in the message of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Quran and the Prophet وسلم, are obliged to and do pray five times a day every day at these times unless there is an excuse not to so why? Ustad Nursi was presented with the question somebody asked him why are these five times? Yeah, we know that in the uh, in hadith of Mi'raj the Prophet uh, was first given 50 and then he came down and uh, he met Isa alayhi salam. Isa alayhi salam told him to go back and ask for a reduction and he went back and he asked for a reduction and so on and so forth and eventually it it came down to five. We know this from the prophetic tradition. However, it should not look like that that we ended up with five was an accident. God knew, God knows everything. In the past and, the, and in the future, he knew that it was going to come down to five and he intended the five. So why did God intend the five? What is the wisdom behind it? And the word that Ustad Nursi uses here is hikmah, wisdom. He is not saying uh, reason as in illa or sebeb because that may be something that we may not have access to. But we can know the wisdom, or maybe some some of the wisdoms behind uh, God's decisions, God God's will, behind the uh, things that they happen in life, behind the commands that, that that God gives to us. We can un- try to understand the wisdom behind these. We may not have access to all of it, but we may have access to some of it. And, and using the word wisdom as opposed to illa or, or sebeb, uh, cause, reason, uh, indicates a certain level of modesty that we should all have before God. Because his knowledge is absolute. His knowledge is limitless. Whereas our knowledge is extremely limited. We cannot understand with our extremely limited knowledge 
all the reasons, all the causes, all the wisdoms that he intends with his absolute knowledge. We need to preserve modesty, and that's why we, here we are using the word hikmah and wisdom. And in the same line, Ustad Nursi continues and says, I shall point out only one of the many instances of wisdom in these particular times for daily prayers, for the five daily prayers. Evet, her bir namazın vakti mühim bir inkılab başı olduğu gibi azim bir tasarruf ilahinin ayinesi ve o tasarruf içinde ehsanat-ı külliye ilahiyenin birer makesi olduğundan Kadir-i Zülcelal'e o vakitlerde daha ziyade tesbih ve tazim ve haddiz nimetlerinin iki vakit ortasında toplanmış yekûnine karşı şükür ve ham demek olan namaza emredilmiştir. Şu ince ve derin manayı bir parça fehmetmek için beş nükteyi nefsimle beraber dinlemek lazım. So these are two sentences. The first sentence is actually a definition of fala or prayer, the obligatory prayers. Therefore, we should read it very carefully. All else or most else in this treatise is going to emanate from that definition. Yes, like each of the times of prayer, marks the start, beginning of an important revolution. So what kind of revolution are we talking about? Well, it is a change from a stage in life to another stage in life. And this will become more clear as we read through the treaties. So also is, that is, each of these times are each a mirror to divine disposal of power, i.e., what happens in the creation through God's use of his power, and to the universal divine bounties, the bounties, the blessings that God showers on us, on the creation, within that disposal. Thus, more glorification and extolling of the all-powerful one of glory have been ordered at those times, and more praise and thanks for all the innumerable bounties accumulated between each of the times, which is the meaning of the prescribed prayers. So the translation is a bit warped. We are ordered the five daily prayers, which mean increasing tesbih and ta'zim, and therefore presenting our gratitude and praise to God, Tesbih means saying subhanallah, glory be to God. And ta'azim is Allahu Akbar, uh, declaring, pronouncing that God is the greatest. So prayer means increasing our tesbih, glorification, and ta'azim, declaring the greatness of God, and presenting our gratitude and praise to God in an increased way, in an intensified way, at particular times in the day and these particular times are each marking the beginning of a great event great transformation in the day and they also are mirrors of great tremendous events that are the consequence of the disposal of God's power and that God is an all-powerful God full of majesty Zul Jalal and these moments these times in the day are also mirrors of the bounties or the times the disposal of universal bounties that God showers on us that was it another attempt to translate this long and profound sentence. What is prayer? Prayer is increasing our glorification to God, increasing our expression of gratitude and praise to God at certain times in the day. And these certain times mark important, significant, great transformations in the day and those great, great transformations in the day are also mirrors of great events, happenings in the creation that 
are indicating acts coming from God's power and the bounties, the disposal of the bounties that God bestows upon us. In order to understand the subtle and profound meaning to some extent, you should listen together with my own soul to the following five points. Ustad Nursi is saying that we should listen with his own soul. He is addressing his own soul, and his own soul is the one who is listening to the treaties, and we should also wake up, become alert, and listen to this as a lesson that is being given to our own souls. And inshallah, if we do that, there will be benefit, there will be more benefit in reading it and listening to it. So it's not Nursi here says, listen to five points. The word in Turkish and also Arabic is nukta. And nukta is not just point or is, is not any point. The, the word for regular point would be nokta. And here the word is nukta, which means that it is a subtle point. It is a point. It is uh, an explanation that has a subtlety to it. So these are five subtle points. First subtle point. Namazın manası Cenab-ı Hakk'a tesbih ve tazim ve şükürdür. This is a key sentence. If we internalize the key sentence, understand and internalize the key sentence, it's going to be easier, it's going to become easier to move on to other explanations, other meanings and ideas that are being presented to us in this treatise. And the sentence is this. The meaning of fala, the obligatory prayer, is the offering of glorification, praise and thanks to Almighty God. The words that are used for glorification, praise and thanks in Turkish are tesbih, Ta'zim and Shukr. Tesbih, as we already mentioned, refers to saying Subhanallah, Subhanallah. For those who know Arabic, this is going to be very easy, but for those who do not know Arabic, if you pay attention, you can recognize that there is a connection between the word Subhan and Tesbih. They both contain the same three consonants. Subhan and Tesbih. So Tesbih is uh, to declare that God is Subhan. And what is Subhan? It's difficult to uh, translate. But what we mean is that, or one of the meanings of this is that God free from, above, beyond any defects. If we look around and see anything that appear to be defective or deficient or problematic, we do not attribute that to God. Now, this does not mean that God did not create that. No, God created it. We do not our understanding or perception of deficiency to God. It is deficient in our perception. In a higher reality, it has a purpose and it is perfect. As we talked in the last episode, reality is beautiful. There is nothing in the possibility. There is nothing in the realm of possibility that is better or more beautiful than what is in the realm of reality. Reality is beautiful. If we cannot see that beauty, that is because the limitedness of our perception. So therefore, we acknowledge this limitation and say, Subhanallah, and declare that God is glorified. He is free from any defects, any problems, any deficiencies, we glorify him. And then ta'azim. Ta'azim or takbir, these are going to be used in this treatise to some extent interchangeably, refers to saying, Allahu Akbar, God is the greatest. We do not understand this as a matter of comparison between the creation and the creator 
and then saying acknowledging that that the creator is greater than what is in his creation we do not have a, any way to understand the greatness of god other than building this concept of greatness by recognizing great things around us and then developing that as a concept in our intellect therefore when we think we to some extent are bound to think through the creation through the contemplation of the creation however we also need to understand that god is not comparable to anything in his creation therefore when we say allahu akbar we mean something more than a comparison between what he has created and what he is god is the greatest what it means is that it he is greater than even the greatest thing that i can possibly think of understanding that we cannot fully understand god let alone quantify god and may god protect us from going that way when we say greater or greatest we are not talking about a form of quantification we are perhaps sifting through all the creation that we have learned about up to the point that we are we are in life thinking contemplating the greatest among them building this notion of greatness in our heart and then declaring that god is infinitely greater than that too and then shukr gratitude or thanks this is about recognizing the bounties that he has bestowed on us and on the rest of the creation on us part is easy but as humans we have the ability and responsibility to recognize the bounties that god bestows upon the entire creation too because none none other than humans in the creation have that capacity to the capacity to the degree that humans have and that is something that we need to try to build up to we need to aspire for so tasbih ta'zim and shukr and the expression that we use as a keyword in order to express our shukr that we learned from the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is alhamdulillah so these are again subhanallah glory be unto god allahu akbar god is the greatest and alhamdulillah praise and gratitude be to god now the word shukr and hamd are not the same similar but not the same but sometimes we may see them being translated with the same words in english as gratitude or thanks uh, hamd involves praise too and this is a very long very broad subject i cannot do justice to it uh, in the context of this Uh, recording this episode but briefly hamd involves praise and that praise is not only for the blessings that he has bestowed on us but for for for what he is god is praiseworthy regardless of the circumstances therefore uh, the, the gnostics have said alhamdulillah ala kulli hal those who have recognized their role, their lord and the reality as reality is have said alhamdulillah ala kulli hal that is praise gratitude thanks be to god in all circumstances and that's what we say too shukr on the other hand is more linked to the blessings that god bestows on us and as we said on the creation in general so the meaning of the prayers is the offering of glorification tasbih the expression of god's greatness and thanks gratitude to almighty god janab haq yani celaline karşı kavlen ve fiilen subhanallah deyip takdis etmek that is recognizing his majesty and imagining ourselves 
as a witness of His Majesty, and saying in action and in words, Subhanallah, glory be to God, and sanctifying Him in this way. We recognize God's Majesty, Jalal. We recognize His majestic attributes. Scholars, Gnostics, have classified God's attributes in three types. These are majestic attributes, beautific attributes, and attributes of perfection. When we say majestic attributes, we think about, for instance, Allah. God is Alim. God is tremendous. We think about power. God is powerful, all-powerful, Qadir. We think about the overpowering quality of God's power. God is Al-Qahar. When we think about the beautific attributes, for instance, the easiest one, I guess, is that we think about God's mercy. God is merciful and God is the mercy giver. God is Rahman and Rahim. God is beautiful and the source of all beauty. God is Jamil. God is gentle in dealing with his creation. God is Latif. God is forbearing. God is Halim. So these are all beautific attributes. And the attributes of perfection can either be attributes that combine these two two aspects in one notion or when we think of these aspects together in combination. So this is what we need to understand when we say that we imagine ourselves as witnessing God's majesty in this sentence, Jalal. That's a good word to learn uh, in the Arabic too because we say majesty but it doesn't fully convey the meaning that that God has chosen to refer to himself, Jalal, majestic. We imagine ourselves witnessing the majesty of God, witnessing his majesty, and we say in words and also in action, Subhanallah, glory be to God, and we sanctify him. So this is part of the prayer. When we stand before God motionless in the prayer, when we go to the Kira, when we bend down, when we prostrate and go to sajda in the prayer. These are all actions that express the meaning of subhanallah because we are lowering ourselves before God, we are recognizing His majesty. And this is when we intensify our glorification in the prayer. But then that needs to expand to the rest of our lives and we need to continue to glorify God in our actions and in our words throughout our lives. That is, we need to walk on the earth as if we are walking in the presence of His Majesty. And when we do that, we cannot transgress. We cannot oppress. We are in His presence. He is the greatest. We are in his in the presence of his majesty. How can we do something that's going to anger him? How can we do something that's going to anger him while we recognize that he is a qahar, he's overpowering, and he is the greatest? Hem kemal ne karşı lafzan ve amelen Allahu ekber deyip ta'zim etmek. And then, to say Allahu Akbar, God is the greatest, before His Kemal, before His perfection, by imagining ourselves before His perfection, witnessing His perfection, to say again with words and also with actions, Allahu Akbar, God is the greatest, and thereby to extol Him, to announce His greatness. Tremendousness. Hem cemaline karşı kalben ve lisanen ve bedenen elhamdülillah deyip şükretmektir. And then, before his beauty, 
witnessing his beauty, witnessing his jamal, to say, and here there is a subtle but very uh, important and beautiful nuance, to say by words with our bodies and with our hearts. So this needs to be recognized, especially in the heart, witnessing his beauty to say with our hearts, with our tongue, and with our bodies, Alhamdulillah, praise and thanks be to God and to thank Him. Demek tesbih ve tekbir ve hamd namazın çekirdekleri hükmündedirler. Therefore, that means tesbih, glorification, tekbir, uh, extolling, or, or pronouncing the greatness of God, and hamd, praise, are like seeds of prayer. They have the function of what a seed has for a tree, for a plant, for the prayer. Or that a, the relationship that a seed has with the tree, these three concepts have that relationship with the prayer. In the prayer, tesbih, tekbir, and hamd are like the seeds of the prayer. If we sow good quality seeds in the prayer, we reap their benefits when they grow up and, and bloom. Ondandır ki namazın harekat ve eskarında bu üç şey her tarafında bulunuyorlar. Because of this, these three things are everywhere in the prayer, in its actions and in its utterances. They are everywhere in the actions and utterances that we do in order to perform our prayers. Hem ondandır ki namazdan sonra namazın manasını tekit ve takviye için şu kelimatı mübareke 33 defa tekrar edilir. And also because of this we repeat these three blessed words that is Subhanallah, Elhamdulillah, Allahu Ekber 33 times after the prayer in order to reaffirm and consolidate or strengthen the meaning of the prayer. Namazın manası şu mücmel hülasalarla tekid edilir. The meaning of the prayer is reaffirmed with these three concise and comprehensive summaries with these three summaries that contain the essence in them in short form but very comprehensively and concisely so to sum this up in this first subtle point we are trying to understand the meaning of prayer and once we understand the meaning of prayer that meaning or the understanding of that meaning is going to help us understand the allocation of the precise times for each prayer in a day, inshallah. And that meaning is first to recognize, then to pronounce, and then to act upon three notions or realities. And these are tesbih, tekbir or ta'zim, and tahmid of God. That is, to glorify God, to extol God, to pronounce His greatness, and to express gratitude and thanks and praise to and for God. And these are like seeds in the prayer. The prayer shoots from and blooms from those seeds. İkinci nükte. Now we will move on to the second subtle point. İbadetin manası şudur ki, dergâh-ı ilahide abd, kendi kusurunu ve aciz ve fakrını görüp, kemal-i rububiyetin ve kudret-i samedaniyenin ve rahmet-i ilahiyenin önünde hayret ve muhabbetle secde etmektir. Now first we talked about the meaning of salat, prayer. 
And what is Salah? It is a form of worship. Now we will try to understand what worship is. What is that relationship that we build by pronouncing certain things, by saying certain things and doing certain things while addressing our Lord? Worship, ibadah. The meaning of worship is that the abd, the slave of God, stands in divine presence and understands his own deficiencies, his own impotence, powerlessness, and poverty. He sees these and he goes to prostration. He prostrates before the perfection of of lordship and the power of the eternally besought one and divine mercy in a state of awe and love since i am translating as i am reading the sentences may not be fully built up therefore i'm going to go back and try to do this again the meaning of worship is that the slave goes to prostration in a state of Oh, and love by understanding his own deficiencies, impotence, and poverty, and therefore by using these as a point of reference, recognizing the perfection of God's lordship, the the power of the eternally besought one. And here the word eternally besought one again is samed samed or samedaniyet, God's attribute of being summit, God's attribute of being the eternally besought one, which means that he is in need of nothing and everything is in need of him. And that is a measure of his power because he is able to procure the needs of everything, fulfill the needs of everything in his creation. So by using that as that impotence and poverty and deficiency as a, as a point of reference to understand God's perfectional lordship and power of it being the eternally besought one and divine mercy. And as a result of this recognition to go to prostration in a state of awe and love. Oh, and love. And this is also important because what we are recognizing here, if we go through those three notions that we recognize in relation to, to God, that is a summary of perfection, majesty, and beauty. Or they relate to perfection, majesty, and beauty to Kemal Rububiyet, the perfection of his lordship. That is his perfection. That relates to his attributes of perfection. Kudrat is yet power of being eternally besought one that relates to his majesty. Rahmet ilahiye divine mercy that relates to his beauty or beautific attributes. So everything is being built up uh, on one another, or there is a particular structure that is being followed in each of these nuktas that are built on those three seeds. Because as we said before, we say subhanallah in recognition of, by witnessing God's majesty. We say alhamdulillah by witnessing God's beauty. And we say Allahu Akbar by witnessing God's uh, perfection, kemal. And for this reason, Ustad Nursi insisted, this is a tangent, uh, for this reason, Ustad Nursi ins- insisted that uh, when he and his students did the tasbihat after the prayer, which is the sunnah, the practice of the Prophet wasallam, he would insist that they start saying subhanallah by saying zul jalali subhanallah. That is subhanallah for the one who is the owner of majesty. And then zul jamali alhamdulillah. That is Alhamdulillah, for one who is the owner of all beautiful attributes. And then, Zul Kamali Allahu Akbar, that is Allahu Akbar for the one who is perfect, who is the owner of perfection. So the slave 
of God recognizes his own deficiency, his own impotence, and his own poverty. And then he recognizes the perfection of God's Lordship, the power of the eternally besought one, and the divine mercy. He recognizes all of these. And then this leads him to a state of awe and love, all for his majesty and perfection, love for his beauty and perfection. And then also awe for his beauty and love for his majesty too, which then combines together in his perfection. This is worship. Worship is not something that we do because we are obliged to do. We are obliged to do. But it should not be something that we do because we are obliged to do. We should not be able to not do it. We should not be able to not do it because once a person, once a human being recognizes his majesty and beauty and perfection, one cannot help but be filled with a sense of awe and love and once a person is filled with that sense of awe and love one cannot help but go to prostration before his majesty before his beauty and before his perfection so this is a definition that Ustad Nursi is offering to us in this subtle point the second subtle point yani Rububiyetin saltanatı nasıl ki ubudiyeti ve itaati ister, rububiyetin kutsiyeti paklığı dahi ister ki, abd kendini, kendi kusurunu görüp istiğfar ile ve Rabbine bütün nekaisten pak ve müberra ve ehli dalaletin efkarı batlasından münezzeh ve mualla ve kainatın bütün kusuratına mukaddes ve muarra olduğunu tesbih ile subhanallah ile ilan etsin. Now we are going to go through this one by one. Subhanallah, Allahu Akbar, Alhamdulillah. We are going to open each one of these up. That is, in the way that the power or sovereignty of lordship requires slavehood and obedience, subjection, subordination and obedience, so does the sanctity and purity of lordship require that the slave declares his Lord pure and free from all deficiencies and above and beyond the false ideas of the people of misguidance, the false notions that the people of misguidance attribute to him by asking for forgiveness upon seeing his own deficiencies and by glorifying his Lord through tasbih, that is, by saying Subhanallah. Again, what do we intend when we say Subhanallah? Glory be to God. We intend, one, to see our own deficiencies, mistakes, sins, rebelliousness, disobedience, oppression on ourselves and on other people. And the list can go on. Seeing this, Recognizing this, acknowledging this, and asking for forgiveness. And then turning to reflecting on our Lord and seeing that He is above and beyond all deficiencies and the false ideas that people of misguidance attribute to Him cannot reach Him. That's just their misconceptions. And He is above and beyond all of those we just turn to him and recognize him in his perfection. He is much higher than them. And he is also above and beyond the defects and imperfections that we may be perceiving in the creation. We take all of those and put them on the side and recognize, acknowledge and pronounce that our Lord has nothing to do with them. They are misconceptions. They are misperceptions. They are not the reality that emanates from him. And this is also a matter of adab, etiquette, before God. We recognize this, but sometimes our intellect or compulsive souls or the Satan may be taking our thinking, maybe thinking our reflections to 
places where we may attribute, attribute those to God. And we may all fall into this trap. We get sick, and then we may complain about sickness. And while complaining about our sickness, we may, without recognizing, actually be complaining about our Lord. For He is the one we know who gave that ailment to us. So the good etiquette requires to recognize that if He gave it to us, there is, there sure is, there absolutely is a benefit in it for us. And in the larger picture, in the bigger picture, it is something good and beautiful. Sometimes we may see these disasters. An earthquake, let's say, happens somewhere, or there is a flood, and we see people dying and babies crushed on their boulders and whatnot. And then we cannot sometimes, we may sometimes not help thinking, oh God, why is this? No, we don't do that. We recognize immediately that God is above and beyond anything that we may think of to be ugly in the creation. It is ugly in our perception. To give a more concrete example let's see that we are passing by a garbage can and the garbage has not been collected for a few days and there's organic matter that is rotting in the garbage can and it smells horrid so we think that wow this is horrid this is really ugly and if we are not trained if we have not trained our uh, compulsive souls evil commanding souls to have good etiquette before our Lord Satan may even come to us and maybe convince our uh, compulsive soul to think, did God create this? Well, what we need to recognize again is that this is something in actually beautiful in that bigger picture. We may not see all the wisdoms behind it. But let's say one of the wisdoms might be that although it smells horrid and it's such an ugly thing for us, there are probably millions, maybe billions of bacteria that are enjoying at that given moment, at that very moment, that are enjoying that rotting matter. And they are alive, and this is their risk. This is their provision. And that is beautiful, because although it smells horrid to us, that is our perception. It, is, it does not smell horrid to the bacteria. It does not smell horrid to, let's say, the chicken who might be in there eating the worms that might be eating the bacteria. It is not horrid to the worms that grow in that, in that rotten thing. And also, another wisdom that we can attribute to this is that what would happen, what would happen if, it, if it did not rot? If it stayed there forever? Earth is, let's say, 5 billion years old. If all organic matter that, that God created on earth just kept accumulating, what would happen? This is a process of cleansing. This is a process of cleaning. And it is beautiful. So, this is just a small example as to what the cognitive process that we employ, should we, in relation to what we observe around us, if it appears to be ugly or bad or deficient in some respect, we say, no, the given, the starting point is, as we said in uh, our previous episode, the, the starting point is that reality is beautiful. If we don't see it beautiful, if we see ugly, there is something that we are missing in the picture. Reality is beautiful. And therefore, the slave of God recognizes this and goes to prostration in a state of O oh, and he declares with tasbih subhanallah glory glory be to god hem de rububiyetin kemali kudreti dahi ister ki abd kendi zaafını ve mahlukatın aczini görmekle kudreti samedaniyenin azameti asarına karşı istihsan ve hayret içinde allahu ekber deyip Huzu ile rükûa gidip ona iltica 
ve tevekkül etsin. Then, the perfection of the power of lordship entails or demands that the slave recognizes his weakness and the impotence of all that is in the creation and and then recognizes the tremendousness of the products of the power of the eternally besought one and sees perceives the beauty in the tremendousness and in a state of awe and wonder he says Allahu Akbar God is the greatest and is filled with humility and in that state he goes to recur he bends down and seeks refuge in his Lord and puts his trust in him so here we are referring to God is the greatest where do we see God's great greatness we see it in the tremendousness of the products of the power of the eternally besought one now the creation relates to first God's will and then to God's power God wills things and with his will he designates and with his power he creates so all that that we see around is a product of his power and in that product in those acts in the phenomena that we see around we recognize a tremendousness and this tremendousness indicates the tremendousness of his power and the tremendousness of his power indicates his tremendousness and one way to recognize that tremendousness is also to re- recognize again that he is summit he is the eternally besought one and this translation does not fully uh, convey the meaning of the word summit he is the one who is in need of nothing but everything is in need of for being created for their origination and for their maintenance so the earth is created there was nothing that looked like the earth God willed it into existence he created he originated created it and it has been living on for about five billion years so it needs God it owes its existence for five billion years to God so he created and he is maintaining and everything on earth need for their existence and maintenance he is the one who provides or expand us everything that everything in the cosmos that we observe around us and according to some some calculations it is at least 14 billion light years wide and it's difficult to comprehend but we should try at least 14 billion light years wide there is actually a video that um, animates this it starts from the surface of the earth and then it moves out beyond the atmosphere then goes through the solar system uh, moves further and then we see uh, the milky way the galaxy that the earth and the solar system are in and then it keeps moving and moving and moving and it moves ultimately to the edge of the known universe and this is not cosmos by the way cosmos is something much larger than that it it, it includes all realms that we see and we don't see this is the universe that we see and then it moves back down to the earth and if you try to imagine what's going on there it is tremendous inshallah if i find a link to that video i'm going to put it on the website uh, reflections-rn.org and everybody can take a look at it there so the slave recognizes his weakness and the impotence of the creation left to their own means they are all doomed whereas they are all being taken care of and they are being taken care of in a majestic way so the slave recognizes 
then the tremendousness in the power that is disposing all that is out there in the in existence and that is procuring the needs of taking care of all that is out there in existence and he says Allahu Akbar God is the greatest and he goes to the cure in a state of humility and he takes refuge in his Lord why? and he puts his trust in his Lord why is he taking refuge and putting his trust in his Lord because he knows that there is no other power out there he is the only only source of all power he is all powerful one who finds refuge in him does not need anything else one who is left without him cannot find anywhere to take refuge hem rububiyetin nihayetsiz hazine-i rahmeti de ister ki abd kendi ihtiyacını ve bütün mahlukatın fakr ihtiyacını ihtiyacatını sual ve dua lisanıyla izhar ve rabbinin ihsan ve inamatını şükür ve sena ile ve elhamdülillah ile ilan etsin now we came to the third notion which relates to elhamdülillah thanks gratitude and praise be to god and to god's beautiful attributes and the treasure of mercy of the lordship that is unlimited entails requires demands that the slave should expose his own need and the need and poverty of the entire creation with the tongue of imploring and supplication and that he declares the blessings and bounties of his lord in a state of gratitude and praise by saying alhamdulillah once again the unlimited treasure of mercy of the lordship requires that the slave exposes his own need and the need and poverty of the entire creation with the tongue of imploring and supplication and then he also declares announces the blessings and bounties of his lord in a state of thankfulness and praise by saying alhamdulillah here there is an emphasis on exposing and declaring god has bestowed us and the entire creation with all these blessings and our job is to acknowledge it to see it to recognize it to acknowledge it and then also to declare it and this declaration is a universal declaration the ant praises his lord and declares the blessings that are on him by living and there are some ants that cut leaves and take it to their nest and there they grow uh, some kind of fungus on the leaf and then eat the fungus by eating that fungus and benefiting from it and moving on to cut other leaves the ant declares the bounties that are on him from his lord as for humans this is one aspect of our existence by eating the food nutrition eating food that is from good sources and then benefiting from it and showing it in our bodies through our health and actions and just just by being this is one aspect of our gratitude and thankfulness but also by using our intellect and then declaring that this through our tongue by just, by saying it by announcing it before the entire creation before the angels god asked adam alayhi salam the names of things and he named them all the angels could not do it the angels do not have the ability to witness taste and witness all the bounties that god bestows on his creation they are limited whereas our our human nature is comprehensive and therefore we can recognize all the bounties 
not all of us, but all together as humanity, we can recognize all the bounties and the Prophet وسلم, was taken from earth to what is named Qab Qawsain, the, the distance between the, the wood and the string of a bow, two of those. Whatever that means exactly, we do not know, but very close all the way to being before his Lord. And here we also need to understand that God is above and beyond space and place. So we do not fully understand the meaning of this, but what we can understand is that he at least went all the way to the end of that 14 billion light years wide universe. And what is whatever is beyond that, and the, what is beyond it is also tremendous. He witnessed it all, and humanity as a whole has the capacity to witness everything, all the all the bounties that God has bestowed upon His creation. Therefore, humanity and each human being have the responsibility to contemplate this, to reflect upon this and declare God's blessings on his creation before the angels, before the spiritual beings, before the rest of the creation, before the stars and moon and animals and trees and plants and other humans and before their Lord. Saying, Alhamdulillah. The, the word hamd in this word as all tafsirs all interpretations, exegesis of the uh, first chapter of the Quran uh, would tell us at length in the interpretation of the word Alhamd in the first verse of the Quran Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen All praise and gratitude be to God, the Lord of the universes or the, the, the Lord of the realms or the Lord of the worlds Hamd there is comprehensive Hamd praise and gratitude that we are talking about there is comprehensive and the wider we can expand our imagination and cognition of this concept and the wider we, we intend the better we do it we say it with a coolly general intention when we say alhamdulillah alameen in the prayer that is what we intend and that recognition is part of our being human, our function as human beings that are special and that are different from all the rest of the creation. Ashraf al the most honored of the creation. Demek namazın ef'al ve akvali bu manaları tazammun ediyor ve bunlar için taraf ilahiden vaz edilmişler. In that case, the acts and utterances of the prayer entails these meanings and they have been ordained from divine presence for this purpose. What purpose? Because they entail, because they comprise these meanings. So in the acts and utterances of prayer, we need to think about these meanings, all of these meanings. It is not just an exercise and, and, and vocalizing certain words, utterances. No. We act in the way that the Prophet ﷺ told us to act when we pray. And we utter the words that the Prophet ﷺ taught us to utter as we pray. Because they entail, they contain, they indicate these tremendously profound meanings and those meanings once again are summarized in three notions that we articulate in three words and those are subhanallah glory be to god alhamdulillah praise and gratitude be to god and allahu akbar god is the greatest these are the seeds of worship and therefore prayer which is a comprehensive and essential form of worship that God taught us and obligated on us. Inshallah we will stop here 
and in the next episode we will continue with the third subtle point of the ninth word there are five subtle points altogether but the um, fourth and fifth ones are longer so inshallah we will move on as we can in the next episode and possibly in the uh, following episode too سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم وآخر الدعوة هم أن الحمد لله رب العالمين